welcome everybody and uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, uh, get some education about uh, the subconscious mind. When I, um, in my therapy practice, I, I work on two levels. I work on um, the conscious mind, which is which is basically your logical mind. That that's the kind of mind that tells right from wrong and and uh, like stacking things, like counting things. And in below, and, and I kind of uh, kind of related to a uh, an iceberg. And if you look at the picture there on the screen, what you're what you're conscious of is what you can see, what you're aware of. So that's the top of the iceberg. But it's only about five ten percent of how big an iceberg actually is. So that's your people say you only use five percent of your brain power. Well. You use 100% of your brain power, but the, the issue is, is that most people are only using their conscious mind. Uh, so below that conscious level is your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind contains all your feelings, your emotions, your experiences, everything you've gone through in your entire life is locked up in a, this little computer called a subconscious mind. Now, you can't really see it. It's, it's basically really in simplistic terms. It's really your imagination. And your imagination can do really crazy things if you allow it. Now, when we get to below your subconscious mind, you get to your super conscious mind. That's kind of the level of intuitiveness. It's the level of uh, people call it a third eye uh, of being able to be in tune with uh, people's feelings and emotions, to be able to sense things, to be able to sense when things are wrong. So your conscious mind um, uh, we dealt with uh, before. So today we're just going to go in the middle here in, into a, into what exactly constitutes the uh, subconscious mind. So I'm going to start off and play a video and 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 just because uh, this is this will kind of set the stage for what I'm about to talk uh, to in the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Dismissed from drama school with a note that read, "Wasting her time. She's too shy to put her best foot forward." Turned down by the Decca recording company who said, We don't like their sound, and guitar music is on the way out. A failed soldier, farmer, and real estate agent. At 38 years old, he went to work for his father as a handyman. Cut from the high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. His fiance died, he failed in business twice, he had a nervous breakdown and he was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never lived. So let's talk about this awful idea of what failure is. And, you know, lots of times we ask ourselves questions, you know, what if, uh, what if this happens? What if people don't like me? What if I don't say the right thing? What if I mess up in a presentation? And the, the four uh, biggest issues that we all face, all of us face, when we have these what ifs, uh, the, the anxiety and stress, uh, depression, can all be summed up into f it can be lumped into four areas: fear, anger, guilt, and resentment. So I want to address those. I want to talk about where phobias come from, where fears come from, but, but more importantly, how we actually have control over all of this. And most people don't really understand or how we do have control of, of our lives. So we all have a personal truth. And our personal truth is simply this. In life, you get what you feel you deserve. And sometimes you see it when, when people pick the wrong partner all the time and, and they stay in an abusive relationship because they feel, well, that's all they deserve. They settle for less in life. And there's enough of everything in life so that everybody can be successful. Nobody needs to be unsuccessful. So here are 
limiting beliefs. There's basically three areas, limiting beliefs about yourself, limiting beliefs about others, and limiting beliefs about the world. And when I, when I say limiting beliefs, I mean they limit people. They limit people from reaching their true potential. So um, limiting beliefs about yourself, meaning you're a loser, I'm a failure, I'm unlikable, I'm incapable. Limiting beliefs about others. People are against you. People are untrustworthy. People are manipulative. Uh, if I don't break off this relationship, my partner is going to break off the relationship. And limiting beliefs about the world. Uh, you know, the world has dealt you a bad hand. Uh, it's a dark place. It's an evil place. I guess this is the best that I'm going to get. And I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to live with it. And all of those are untruths. Every single one of them are. You see, what happens is when you have a limiting belief, it's like a tape recorder that's on, that's on auto, auto. And when it ends, it continues to go. And that tape recorder keeps playing in your mind. And it's that negative belief that you have. And it keeps playing and playing and playing and playing in your mind. So you need to rewrite that. You need to write over that tape recorder. I'm, I'm going to teach you how to do that. And it's, 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 it's very simple. It's, it's, and, and your subconscious mind is kind of like autocorrect. And you know what it's like when you're using your phone and it substitutes a different word for the word that you want to, that you want to use. And that's what your subconscious mind is. I, I, I'll get into um, positive affirmations and, and that's kind of what a positive affirmation does. You, you say something that's contrary to what you believe in. And of course your subconscious mind is listening and it says, hold on now, you, 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 don't you tell me that you're not uh, afraid, you're, uh, uh, you're confident in public speaking because you've told me for the last 15 years that you're, you're nervous when you get up in front of people. So as much as you want to try and force your subconscious mind to, to listen to what you're saying consciously, your subconscious mind contains 90% of your brain power. So when you have a 90% of your brain working against 10% of your brain, well, who's going to win? Your subconscious mind is going to win. So there has to be a better way to reform beliefs and fears that we have. One of the things that I always say to my clients to be aware of is a term called confirmation bias, and it's a red flag. A confirmation, confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, recall, interpret, and favor information in a way that supports our beliefs. To give you an idea of that, it, it just simply look to our neighbors to the south and all the conspiracy theories and all of the things that had to fall into place for the election to be stolen. People will, t even though these people who believe the election was stolen and they're confronted and they're given evidence of the 61 or 62 cases that went before the Supreme Court and every one of them were struck down, even though the information is so overwhelming to contradict that confirmation bias, people still believe that the election was stolen. So that's that's one that comes to mind very, 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 uh, very, very easy. So how do you know you might have confirmation bias? And it's it's a limiting it's a it's thing that is something that's going to limit you from learning something new because you get stuck and entrenched in an idea. So you tend to be all or nothing. You the, your belief won't adapt to changing conditions. Like you're you're stuck. The the carrier or the person becomes emotional when discussing it. They get upset because the uh, the person is showing them information contrary to what they're, they're not open-minded they're closed-minded they aggressively defend their belief and they have little or no attempt to understand other views if you have any of those behavioral characteristics you probably have confirmation bias and it's not really doing you any good so you have to figure out a way to learn to grow the occam's razor is the other term that i like i talk to uh, when people are, are stuck uh, occam's razor is is a term that says the answer that requires the fewest assumptions is generally the correct one. So when you have to make all these crazy assumptions about um, a conclusion, you know, pick the one that has the least amount of assumptions because that's probably the one that's going to be that's going to be right. If you hear hooves coming behind you. You know, there's probably a good idea if you're in Africa somewhere, or I'm sorry, if you're out in the out in the woods somewhere. You know, it it could be a horse, it could be a a cow, it could be a 
a, a, a big dog, more than likely it's not a zebra. There's a wonderful term that was coined a number of years ago called neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity means it's your brain's superpower. They thought that you were born with your brain and it was all hardwired and your brain was your brain, but now they've known that you can actually rewrite the neurons. You can change the neural pathways in your brain to change your beliefs because beliefs are choices. Beliefs are choices we make every single day. I've had miracles happen uh, to me. Uh, people would, uh, before, even when I, cause I do entertainment, I do hypnosis and, and uh, I had a lady come up at the, at the uh, end of the show. And, and she said, uh, she had volunteered for the show and, and she moved her neck this way and this way. She said, uh, I was in a car accident five years ago and the, physiotherapist couldn't get me to move my neck from side to side. So the beauty about your subconscious mind is it knows where it needs to go to heal itself. Just listen to that statement. Your subconscious mind knows where it needs to go to heal itself. The problem is we get in our own way. We stop ourselves because we don't think that we have the power. The fact is we do have the power. And I can list off dozens and dozens of miracles that, 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 uh, that have happened to people. Um, I've had strange requests. <laughs> um, I had a lady who was engaged to two guys at the same time. Each of them gave them a ring. They each knew about the other person. And she wanted to know if hypnosis would help her choose the right person. We had a quick discussion about it, and she was just afraid she was going to make the pick the wrong person. Um, I had a guy who had to take a lie detector test, and he was wanted to know if I could help him relax and and passed his lie detector test. I didn't take him on as a client. He didn't tell me what the lie detector was about. So people are constantly looking outward for solutions when in fact, we all have the solutions and answers within ourselves. We always do. I, I do past life regression. <clears throat> Many of the issues that we have are usually fears and phobias happen by the time you're seven years old. Our brain is not developed enough. So um, someone says something to you or you do something and someone says you're stupid, you carry that label with you for the rest of your life. So I, I'm, I'm going to later on, I'm going to show you a very quick way of being able to dispel negative, uh, negative beliefs. I do past life regression, which people, uh, there is a, a number of people who believe that, you know, they've had a past life. And, and if you've ever had a deja vu, that's, probably a deja vu from a from another time because energy can't be created or destroyed and this is your super conscious level I'm, I'm getting down to now just for a moment energy can't be created or destroyed so when the energy leaves your body it looks for another body to inhabit that's the theory uh, that's out there no one has been able to prove it but that's a theory I had a young lady who came to me with severe panic attacks and when she was um, 18 um, she or what but it's from the time she was up to the time she was 18 she lived in a house that was where she felt unloved and and uh, not safe at 18 she w went out with a guy who collected swords and he tried to kill her with a sword she wound up in emergency and intensive care and at 22 she was raped by her first cousin and her mother blamed her the next day after she told her mother about the rape when she came home the mother was having a beer in the kitchen with the guy who raped her a few days earlier so we had one session so I asked her, what happens? What's the trigger points? How long does it last? So anytime she'd be in, alone in the house by herself, she would, if she heard a strange noise, she'd curl up in the corner in the fetal position and stay there till her husband came home. That could be 12 hours. She wouldn't go to the bathroom. She wouldn't look out the window. She wouldn't check on her two small kids. She had one and three-year-olds. Couldn't, couldn't check on them. She was paralyzed. She'd call her husband and say, there's someone in the house. They're coming to kill me. You have to come home. So we did one session just one session. And I saw her on a Tuesday. Her, her husband had to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. I didn't email her on Monday. I emailed her on Tuesday and asked how she was doing. She said, by the fourth night, she said, I was sleeping solid throughout the whole night. She said, the first time, she was 31 years old. She said, the first time in 12 years, she was able to function the next day without having to have a nap. Now, she, her brain doesn't work any different than yours. Absolutely not. I don't take credit for 
what she did, she did it all herself. I had a young kid who was getting zero on his math test. One session, he went from zero to 100. So, and I don't take credit for that. All I did was open a door. And that's what I'm, I, that's what I do to my clients. I just open a door. And if, if you're intuitive enough to just step outside your comfort zone and just experience something different true miracles, miracles can happen. Uh, one book I read, um, which is, uh, uh, a Bruce, uh, a book by, uh, by Bruce Lipton, it's called the biology of belief. And Bruce says, it's not our heredity, it's not our environment. He said, it's our beliefs that create our destiny. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's, it's a really, really good book and it really gets into how, how beliefs are formed, what happens to beliefs. So I, I, would, I would encourage everyone to, uh, to get that book. So here's a statement we, we've all heard. I have to see it to believe it. See, we have it backwards. I think the correct saying is, if I believe it, I'll see it. And that's the key. People always look for, they have to see it first in order to believe it. But I think if we believe it, we'll see it. And because that's how our brain works. So there's, there's perception in reality. Henry Ford said, whatever you believe or you don't believe, it's true. It's perception because there is no reality. It's only your perception of what reality is. So what is your perception of things? Do you have a negative perception about yourself? Because either you talked yourself into it or you allowed someone else to talk yourself into that negative perception. So we we talked we uh, we talked about Walt Disney, Lucille Ball, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison failed a thousand times when he was trying to invent the light bulb. He said he figured out a thousand ways a light bulb wouldn't wouldn't work. Thomas Edison, a letter was sent home to his mother saying that Thomas is not bright enough to be in school. He should be homeschooled. And um, uh, the, the Thomas said to his mother, "Mom, what, what did the teacher write? The teacher wrote that you're too smart to be in school, Thomas. You're 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 way ahead of the kids. They can't keep up with you, so I'm going to keep you home." What would have happened if his mother had actually read out the letter that the teacher had said about Thomas? Because she had a limiting belief about Thomas Edison's potential. So, as I said, a door opens up, and I'm going to offer you some suggestions and ideas. What I would encourage all of you to, to do is to walk through that door, have an open mind about what we're going to talk about over the next uh, 25 or 30 minutes or so. So we're influenced in, in, in many ways. When I, when I do this, uh, I show this graphic and I say, now, one of those circles is bigger than the other. Uh, I want you to tell me which one is bigger. Is the, is the red one bigger and bigger and people will put up their hand? Uh, even, I say, even though they look alike, they're not. How many think the blue one is bigger? The people have pulled up their hand. And I'll say, you know, I just can, took me five seconds to convince you that two of those were a different size, but they're actually the same size. And that's how easy it is to convince people and give people a negative belief. All it just takes, sometimes it's over time when people keep telling you you're stupid, or it can be what's called a one-time learning. It can be so severe, you, you're, you're, you're in a plane and it almost crashes. Now you have a severe phobia of planes. Just takes one incident to change your life. You, we've seen all these um, um, ab crunch and, and the thing Suzanne Summers had out with the thigh master and, and the bow blade and this machine on the bottom that shakes and sneakers that are supposed to um, make your calves bigger. You know, a broken mirror is bad luck. Having a, having a cat uh, cross in front of you is bad luck. And of course, then lucky number seven, the lucky leprechaun, the lucky horseshoe, the lucky four-leaf clover. Those are lucky charms. If you look at this, that's, an, that's a, an elevator, inside an elevator. And you'll notice something about the numbers on the elevator. Most people say, yeah, well, there's no number 13. And if you really think about it logically, the people who are on the 14th floor don't actually believe they're on the 14th floor. The people who are on the 14th floor are actually on the 13th floor. But people will 
hotels will do that so people who are suspicious or, or superstitious uh, won't mind being on a button that presses 14, even though it goes to the 13th floor. They did this, uh, they sold a million X-ray bracelets, or Q-ray bracelets, sorry. It's supposed to negatively ionize the ions around uh, your wrist, and it's supposed to uh, change your, your biochemistry and change your vibration uh, to heal you. They did tests on the Q-ray bracelet, and it it, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't have this negative ions. So why did people feel better? I'm going to show you a quick video later on about placebo. Because if you believe it, miracles can happen. So you have to believe it in order to see it. So here's how your subconscious mind works. So I'm going to get you to read this sentence, and I'm going to uh, show you how I can actually program your mind. So I want you to read it and count the Fs. F as in Frank. You're only getting 10 seconds. You have to read it and read it fairly fast. Count the Fs as you're reading it. Here we go. Now, 95% of people will get either two, three, or four. But there's actually six Fs there. Take a look. <clears throat> and you may spend 10 minutes looking at that to see if you can see the Fs, but I'm going to show them to you because we have a limited amount of time. Most people will get those two Fs. Most pe people will get that third F. There's three Fs missing. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. So how did you miss them? I said count the Fs. F as in Frank. Of. Of sounds like a V. So you miss it. That's how easy it is to program people for success or failure. So we all have self-limiting beliefs. All of us do. And they were, you know, they, they come in, in different ways. So here's what happens. You have a limiting belief. That leads you to a lack of action. That leads you to poor results. That leads you to limiting beliefs. And it becomes a vicious circle. You just keep going around and around. And that tape recorder keeps playing around and around and around and around. Our greatest desire is acceptance. Our greatest fear is rejection. So we sometimes stifle ourselves because we're afraid we don't succeed, we're afraid we might get rejected. So we have to kind of throw this idea out the window and, and I'll get into it uh, in, a, in a few minutes about how you can actually reprogram your definition of success. And it's a very easy way to do it. See, in our brain, there's motor neurons and they all fire. So a motor neuron fires a negative belief. A uh, motor neuron on the other end catches that belief. Now, that's a very weak connection, but it fires again and it catches. It fires again and it catches. It fires again and it catches. Now you're starting to get an entrenched belief that's going to be very, it becomes hardwired. And it, then it becomes very, very difficult to break that, that belief. So how, how where, what's the origin of beliefs? We're programmed by our, by our past, what people say to us, what we do. We have rational beliefs. Cocaine is addictive. Uh, if I jump out of a plane without a parachute, I'm, I, I'm probably going to hurt myself. Uh, so rational, you don't need to. It's just rational. It just, it just makes common sense. And then there's scientific, which means you go into a laboratory and you prove that A plus B equals C. So those are, the, those are the three ways we acquire beliefs. But there's a better way. There's a much better way to acquire beliefs. Self-belief. Self-belief is the strongest magic of all because as I keep saying to people, beliefs are choices that we make every single day of our lives. If you have a belief that's not working for you, change it. So here's a graph of a growth mindset. And Carol Dweck wrote a book called Psychology, the, the, new, the uh, Growth Mindset, the New Psychology of Learning. It's a fabulous book. It's probably one of the best books I've ever written. So instead of saying, I'm not good at this, what am I missing? Instead of saying, I give up, say, I'll use a different strategy. Instead of saying, it's good enough, say, is this really my best work? 
I can't make this any better. I can always improve. This is too hard. This may take some time. So you see, you go from a, fi a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And that's how we become better. We're not afraid of failure. Growth-minded people are not afraid of failure. Thomas Edison wasn't afraid of failure. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school team. He wasn't afraid of failure. He went and worked harder. Elizabeth, uh, Lucille Ball, if she had listened to the people, then she we would have never experienced her gift of comedy. So here's basically the core of your subconscious mind. It's your best friend. It wants to help you. It accepts everything that you say to yourself. All your self-talk, positive or negative, it's listening. It doesn't know the difference between right or wrong. It just accepts it. It contains all your experiences, everything that you've gone through in your entire life. And it's habit forming. Your subconscious mind creates your habits based on what you tell it. So people say, leave the past in the past. Well, they studied bees and aerodynamically bees are not supposed to be able to fly. They say they, the wings are not long enough. The body is too, uh, um, uh, the body is too, too, too big. So why can bees fly? They can fly because no one told them they couldn't. So the biggest uh, things that clients say to me about change is that it's, it's going to take long. It's going to be really hard and I need to know the origin. And those are limiting beliefs. Like I said, I've, I've seen miracles happen in a matter of hours, simply hours. So we're born with two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. That's it. That's the only two fears we have when we're born. So we acquire all these fears. That's the bad news. But the good news is if you can acquire a fear, you can unacquire it. We're told 30,000 times, by the time we're 17, we're told 30,000 30, times, yes, you can. And 150,000 times, no, you can't. Five times more we're told no instead of yes. No wonder, why, why, how come, no wonder we're always having, having this negative mindset because we're always told, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. So when we really dig down into fears and phobias, basically all fears and phobias as the fear of being out of control. That's why people take Ativan. Because they're afraid that if they don't take it, something is going to happen. And when you take that Ativan, you're saying to your subconscious mind, I can't handle this. If I don't take that Ativan, something is going to happen. And you become reliant on it. And your subconscious mind says, okay, if you want to be reliant on it, I'll make sure you're reliant on it. And I'll make sure you get nervous. If you don't have any, so make, you make sure you have them. And that's how phobias and fears come about. All up here. So we've heard, we know what placebo is. And um, it's it basically sugar pill. They're illegal in Canada, but in the United States, um, they're allowed uh, to do it. So I, I uh, this these two guys were vets and they had the arthroscopic surgery. And uh, the doctor faked the surgery. And they, he, he cured them. Uh, I'll go through these quickly because I got a short video I want to show you. She, uh, she was on a placebo. Uh, she was bedridden. And within two weeks, she went back to the doctor and said, I, I was on the active medication. She wasn't. Uh, he had esophageal cancer. And the doctor told him that the mortality rate was 100%. Uh, you're not going to make it. And of course, he, he passed on. And when they went to autopsy, uh, there was very little cancer in his throat. So he died with cancer, but not from cancer. Um, this guy said he could uh, cure warts and, and he had a, uh, his, his partner had a client who had congenital exiathic of Brock, who um, he thought was warts. So he said, let me try hypnosis. So that was his arm before the hypnosis. That this was his arm after. That was his legs before the hypnosis. That was his legs after. Turn out, turned out it wasn't warts, it was 
congenital lexiothica Braca, rare disease, and you'll hear from him in a moment. And this guy used the Freedom of Information Act to obtain information from the top six antidepressants. Uh, and he found that the, the difference between the drug and the placebo was minor. Like the difference was incredibly small, meaning it was insignificant. So let me just show, play you this short video and just take a listen because uh, this is really important. My skill as a surgeon had no benefit whatsoever on these patients. All three groups uh, results were exactly the same. They all did improve as a whole, but none of them were any better than the placebo group. So what we found was that the entire benefit of arthroscopic surgery for osteoarthritis of the knee was a placebo effect. In other words, it wasn't the washing out and scraping of the knee that worked. It was the ritual surrounding the surgery. I was sure I was on an active medication. I already knew <laughs> what they didn't know. <laughs> After the eight-week study, the doctors called her in to tell her the truth. He said, well, you were on placebo. And I was very stunned. In fact, in my heart, inside, I didn't say this to him. I said, you're wrong, inside. But outwardly, I said, I said, don't, do you want to check that to be sure? Because I really think I was on the medication. He said, no, you were not. You were on the placebo. The growing evidence that placebos can have a very real effect on the body intrigues Irving Kirsch, a professor of psychology at the University of Connecticut. Kirsch has a special interest in depression and in 2001 used the Freedom of Information Act to obtain data submitted by drug companies to support the licensing of six top antidepressants. His shock findings? The difference between the response of the drug and the response of placebo was less than two points on average on this clinical scale that goes from 50 to 60 points. That's a very small difference. That difference clinically is meaningless. He thought he had cancer. I thought he had cancer. Everybody around him thought he had cancer. I've kind of kicked myself through the years that maybe if I said something or had, did I remove hope from, from him in some way. For almost 30 years, Dr. Metter has been haunted by the possibility that he may unwittingly have condemned Sam Lundy to an early grave simply by believing he was dying. That the transmission of that belief to his patient was more deadly than the cancer itself. Every congenital ixiotic within a thousand miles came. There weren't many. It's a very rare disease. And I attempted to treat them, and none of the others responded at all. Not a smidgen. Mason was never again able to repeat that first incredible success. And he thinks he knows why. I now knew it was incurable. Beforehand, I thought it was warts. And I had a conviction, I can kill warts. After that first case, I was acting. I knew it had no right to get well. <laughs> and you know, I'm sure that was conveyed. The conclusion that we can alter our experience by what we believe about it is a hopeful one. Because indeed it is empowering. Because it means that we're not at the whim of forces outside of ourselves as much as we might have thought we were. I think there's a great potential for making use of this phenomenon for people's benefit. My so the last statement that, that Irving Kirsch made is he said, it's comforting to know that we can alter our experiences by altering, altering our beliefs. Now, We've only got uh, a few more minutes. So I'm going to quickly just go through these and, and finish up because I've, I've got one more uh, video I want to uh, I want to uh, I want to play for you and then I'll leave some uh, I'll leave some time open for questions. So um, let me sum all this up for you in some very simple terms. The only way to achieve the impossible is to believe it is possible. 
You see, I believe there's a solution to every problem. All you have to do is keep looking. That's all you have to do is just keep looking. To live your life, to live, live the life you've imagined, to dwell in possibility. How, how great is that to be able to, to dwell in possibility? When someone tells you there's nothing they can do for you, he, that person is only telling you from his perspective. Nothing that he can do. But there's probably someone else that he or she can do to help you. So you never give up. You don't want to be hopeless. Helpless just means you haven't found the answer. Hopeless means you've given up. So to change, the motivation to change has to be greater than the mot motivation to stay the way you were. Uh, every client that I meet, I say, how is your life going to be better? And you focus on when you give up smoking or you lose weight, you don't focus on what you lost. You focus on what you've gained. That's why people revert back because they focus on what they lost. We need to start focusing on how life is going to be better and to focus on all the things that how, how life is going to be better by whatever goal you, cho you chose in life. As, as I said earlier, positive affirmations very rarely work because you're trying to convince your subconscious mind of something that it's not going to be convinced very easily. So there's a better way. So the two most powerful words are I am. For what you put after them shapes your reality. Now, if you're if you get nervous as a public speaker, I'm just using it as an example, to say I am a confident public speaker. Doesn't matter how much you say that, you're not going to convince yourself. So the, the, the next best thing is I am in the process of. So I am frustrated with my eating habits, but I am learning more about myself. Or I am in the process of becoming the best, for, best version of myself. You can't argue that. You can't argue those statements. Because when you say to your subconscious mind, I'm in the process of, your subconscious mind sets up a series of events to prove you're right. If you have negative beliefs, your subconscious mind will set up a series of events to prove you're right. It doesn't push back. Sleep. When I talk to parents, I always say, don't be careful. Talk to your kids positively when they go to sleep. You don't, you don't rag on them about something that they did wrong because one of the, one of the functions of your subconscious mind is to convert short-term memory into long-term memory while you sleep. So the images and thoughts that people have as they go to sleep become their permanent behavior. Trust yourself. You know, that, that little gut feeling that you have, that's your subconscious mind saying, go for it. You can do this, go for it. But the problem is if we don't trust ourselves, we ask 10 people and you'll get 10 different answers. Oh, I don't think you should do that. Or here's what I would do. Or if, you, if I was you, this is what I would do. You know, it's okay to run something by somebody as long as you have the confidence to be able to go that route yourself because that's what your subconscious mind is telling you because it's your best friend. So believe and expect. The two of the best words in the English language, believe that it can happen and expect it to happen. And when you convince yourself of that, your subconscious, mind's put, subconscious mind puts in process a series of events to prove you're right. It's that simple. If you live your life fully, you will die only once. But if you are scared of every step, fear will kill you day after day. Being defeated is a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. We never fail. People don't fail. They just quit. Now, I have a book. Uh, you can buy it on my website. Um, it's, called, uh, it's called Mind, Body, Soul. It's about mental, physical, and, and spiritual wellness. Uh, on my website, there's a... Uh, GarySummers.ca. There's a link on the bottom called Mind, Body, Soul. I have a Facebook group that that I post some interesting things, wellness things, and and a lot of the holistic healers in the city post things there as well. So you're welcome uh, to uh, to join that uh, join that at any time. I do uh, a number of programs. I do a life skills program for students as well as one for uh, for adults, and I do hypnotherapy for uh, a whole bunch of different things. Um, I, I'll leave the questions till the end. But I want to finish with this video. Um, 
Bruce Almighty. I don't know if you ever saw the movie. Uh, Jim Carrey was a guy who didn't like what God was doing, and and Morgan Freeman was God. So Morgan Freeman got fed up with Jim Carrey complaining. So he said, "Look, you be God, and so you can you can you can make all the decisions." And uh, uh, of course, Jim Carrey was a, it was in the restaurant and. He parted the, the uh, bowl of tomato soup as if he was parting the Red Sea, and he could do do all these things. And he had these million requests, and he just said yes to everybody. So here's – this is something that at the end of it is is really, really powerful. I want you to listen really, really carefully. So this, this is the movie, and this kind of sets up uh, sets up the movie. And just, just listen to what Morgan Freeman, the advice he has for Jim Carrey. It's a wonderful thing. No matter how filthy something gets, you can always clean it right up. There were so many. I just gave them all what they wanted. Yeah. But since when does anyone have a clue about what they want? So do I do. Parting your soup is not a miracle, Bruce. It's a magic trick. A single mom who's working two jobs and still finds time to take her kid to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them, and what they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. So I, I guess in summing this all up, uh, Morgan Freeman said, since when does anybody really know what they want? And I guess that's the first question we all ask ourselves is what do we want? Once you figure that out, then everything kind of flows from that. Since when do people really know what they want? People want me to do everything for them, but what they don't understand is they have the power. And that's what I've been saying for the last 45 minutes. And he ended off with this. He said, if you want to see a miracle, be the miracle. And that's the opportunity that each of you have. Instead of waiting around for a miracle to happen, create one. And you start with yourself. That's my presentation. Um, 